Fred and Francine have a solid metal sphere that has a positive charge. It sits on an insulating stand. Fred thinks the electric field inside the sphere will be closest will be largest closer to the edge and then decreasing as you go to the center of the sphere. Francine thinks there's no electric field inside a conductor. So who is right? This conductor is an electrostatic equilibrium. So look at the word. It starts with electro, which means it has electricity or electric charge. It's static, which means nothing is moving. And it's an equilibrium, which means nothing is accelerating. When something is in electrostatic equilibrium, the charges will spread out as far from one another as possible. This happens almost instantaneously as soon as a charge goes on an object, and the charges will go to the outside of the conductor because they want to go as far away from each other as possible. This is an example of a conductor that's not symmetric, but the charges have all moved to the outside. The result is that there is an electric field of zero on the inside of a conductor. And this is because if there were an electric field on the inside, it would apply a force to any charge on the inside, causing those forces, causing those charges to accelerate. If that happened, it would not be in electrostatic equilibrium. So the result is there is no electric field in the center of an electric conductor. The electric field on the outside of the conductor is perpendicular to the surface. If you look at an electric, a conductor that's not shaped symmetrically, any place where the charges are more collected, you're going to have uh, an electric field that's the strongest at those pointed ends. So Francine is right. There's no electric field inside a conductor that's in static equilibrium. This is the concept behind a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage is a conductive cage with no electric field inside. So let's see an example of one. We're going to start with a Van de Graaff generator, just like we have in class, with the grounding rod. And we have a little figurine of Ben Franklin, and he has tinsel attached to him. That tinsel will show us when there is an electric field. So if you turn on the Van de Graaff generator, you can see that the tinsel will respond to the electric field because the electric field will make the electric field will create a force on the tinsel. Now he's grounded grounding the tinsel and he's going to put a conductive cage over Ben Franklin. And you'll notice there's metal underneath it, aluminum foil, so the whole um, system is surrounded by a conductor. When he turns on the Van de Graaff generator, the tinsel attached to the back of the cage responds to the electric field, but the tinsel inside does not, and that's because there is zero electric field inside a Faraday cage. Next, we're going to look at an electric dipole. So we're going to start with a, an atom with a net charge of zero. We add an external charge that's positive. The electrons inside the atom will move towards the positive charge. The result is that the negative charges are attracted to the positive external charge, and we end up with um, negative charges to the left and a positive, char positive charges to the right. This creates an electric dipole. This is when we have two equal but opposite charges with a separation between them. We often draw an electric dipole like this, with a negative charge and a positive charge. An electric dipole moment is the vector that points from the negative to the positive charge of a dipole. And we can put an electric dipole inside, uh, we draw it like this and we can put it inside a uniform electric field. So a uniform electric field is one where the value of the field is the same throughout. If we put an electric dipole in perpendicular to the electric field or sideways, it will experience a force up from the on the positive charge and a force down on the negative. So the net force will be zero, but overall this dipole will have a torque which will turn the dipole in the counterclockwise direction. 
We can also put the electric dipole in at an angle to the electric field. And again, we would have a positive force upward on the positive charge. We would have a force downward on the negative charge. And overall, a torque on the electric dipole moment, which would turn it counterclockwise. If we put the dipole in aligned with the electric field or parallel to it, it will experience an equal force up and force down and no torque. So the electric dipole will be in equilibrium if it is aligned with the electric field. It will not move or change direction. Now we're going to see how we can calculate the electric field caused by an electric dipole. The electric field from multiple charges is the vector sum of the electric field due to each of the charges. So we're going to figure out what is the electric field at point A and what is the electric field at point B if we have a dipole with a positive and a negative charge. First, to find the electric field at point A, we have to consider the electric field caused by the positive point charge. That will be in the upward direction because electric fields act as though they were a positive probe charge. We also have an electric field from the negative point charge and that will be in the negative direction because we can imagine it's a positive charge at point A and that will be attracted to the negative. But the magnitude will be less because the distance between point A and the, elect and the negative charge is greater. So overall, if we add those two electric fields together, we will get a net charge, net electric field upward. At point B, we're going to have an electric field from the positive charge that goes down and to the right, and an electric field from the negative charge that goes down and to the left. It goes towards the negative charge because it acts like a positive point charge. The vector sum of those two vectors, the x direction will cancel, and the vector sum will be a net vector a, a vector that points downward. Now let's look at the electric field vectors that result from a electric dipole. You'll notice that around the positive charge your electric field vectors are going to point away from the positive charge. Around the negative charge our electric field vectors will point towards the negative point charge. It's in the middle that things look a little bit different, and that's because our vectors are vector sums of the positive and negative uh, electric field vectors. The result is that overall, the electric field will point downward if you're the same distance between the positive and negative point. Now we're gonna consider a special device called a parallel plate capacitor, and we'll be using this in electrostatics, but also in electric circuits. A parallel plate capacitor has two plates that conduct electricity. They're called electrodes, and they have a very thin gap between them. And that gap is a distance in this picture, a distance D. Um, they have an area A, and the area does matter for figuring out values for the capacitors. One electrode has a total charge of a negative Q on the top, and then the bottom one has a charge of a positive Q. It doesn't matter which is on the top or bottom, that's just for this picture. What is special about a parallel plate capacitor is that it can make it makes a uniform electric field. So at any point between these two charged plates, your electric field value will be the same. The equation that we use for the electric field of a capacitor is the charge Q, that's the charge from the positive plate, divided by epsilon naught, which is the permittivity constant, times A, and A is the area of the plate. So the area or the size of the capacitor does matter in the equation for the electric field.